Hey friends, it's that time of year where our thoughts and our taste go to those fresh and delicious summer salads. This video is dedicated to the top six summer salads of 2024 and to proving that not all salads are created equal. After watching these, you're never going to say that eating a salad sucks again. I know this does not look like much sitting here, but take my word for it, honey, you're going to love this salad. It's always good to get the prep work done first, so I'm going to scrub my veggies up really well. I've got a good size sweet onion. I'm going to go ahead and dice up the entire onion, but I'm saving half of it for a salad for tomorrow. I'm doing the same thing with this green bell pepper, only using half of each of those in today's recipe. And then I'm going to dice up about a half a cup of celery. Take all those chopped veggies and throw them in a bowl. To that, we're going to add a 14 ounce can of shredded sauerkraut. I'm not going to drain this at this point. We're going to put it in with all of the liquid. Half a cup of granulated sugar, about an eighth of a cup of oil, and an eighth of a cup of apple cider vinegar. My aunt Colette brought this to Easter, and I'm not a big fan of kraut, but I'll try anything, especially when people are bragging about how good it is. I was shocked when I tried it. It is delicious. I can't really explain it. It's sort of like a relish, sort of like a coleslaw salad. You've just got to try it. Now, Colette uses the 28 or 30 ounce jar of sauerkraut, but I'm halving this recipe today. You can go ahead and drain the kraut off beforehand if you want to but we like to let it sit in all of that juice and then before we serve it drain it off then and of course you do need to refrigerate this for a few hours and let all these flavors kind of develop and come together the first thing that came out of my mouth when i tried it at easter was man this would be good with some beans and cornbread we were right it is awesome with beans it's awesome with a lot of things i think this would be a wonderful addition to any summer picnic this would be great on hot dogs. Don't scoff if you don't like sauerkraut. Just give this a try. I didn't even think I liked cabbage until here recently. This cornbread was made with some of the cornmeal I got at the National Cornbread Festival. So if you're interested in seeing that and a quick little tutorial on how I make my pinto beans, be sure and watch this video all the way through. For lack of a better name, I just call this one a summer veggie salad. It's one of those recipes where you don't really have exact measurements and you just use whatever you have on hand. I'm starting with some broccoli and cauliflower that I'm cutting into just bite-sized pieces and I like to cut as much of the stem off of them as I can. And I also had a red bell pepper on hand, so I'm going to cut that up and throw it in as well. I love green onions, so I'm going to chop up a couple of them. You can just leave this all veggies, but I really enjoy throwing some pepperoni in here. I'm just using a regular size pepperoni and cutting it up into little bitty pieces. If you like salami, that would be a good choice for going in here as well, or even some chunks of ham. Another thing that's good to throw in, if you like it, is olives, but I'm not a huge fan of olives. I do, however, like these little banana pepper rings, so I always throw a few of these in. I also like to eat these on salads. And if you like the pepperoncini peppers, they're really good in this salad too. I also like to sprinkle a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese, just the kind right out of the green can. The dressing for this salad couldn't be any easier. We're going to use a bottled Italian dressing. I really like this Supreme Italian dressing. Hadn't had it in a long time and kind of forgot how good this was. It doesn't have the same taste as a creamy Italian or like the Olive Garden dressing. It's also not quite like the zesty Italian. You can just really taste a lot of herbs and seasonings in this one. I really like it on this salad. Of course, you want to put it in the refrigerator for a little while and let all these flavors come together. This is a salad that I just really make especially for myself. You know that my man is not a veggie eater but I really enjoy this. It makes a great lunch all week long just on its own or you can have it as a side dish at a cookout and we're really great with these marinated hot dogs. Friends, I am so excited to share this recipe with you. It is taking me back in time and I am so excited to take you there with me. This is cornbread salad. 
I'm starting with a half of a pan of cornbread. This is the other half of that skillet of cornbread I made the other night when we had the kraut salad with the pinto beans and I'm just making half of this recipe. So that worked out perfectly. You just want to crumble this into very small little pieces. I mean, you just want crumbs. Usually I use more of a white cornmeal mix. Now I like really sweet yellow cornbread, but it's not normally what I make to eat with beans. This cornbread was delicious, and when we bought this bag of cornmeal down at the festival, Patrick wanted to get the sweet because he does love a sweet cornmeal. This is gonna be fine in this recipe. That looks pretty good to me. The only chopping that we're gonna have to do tonight is some little sweet pickles. We're also gonna need a little bit of juice from these. And if you remember the other night when I chopped up the green bell pepper and the onions, I chopped up enough for this recipe as well. I'm gonna go through these a couple times with my knife and get them diced up nice and small. And I would say this is about half a cup. This is gonna be one of those recipes where I'm gonna be estimating sizes a lot. This is an old one, guys, and they didn't always measure everything out like we like to today. Now, right into this cornbread, I'm putting that half of a diced onion and half of the diced green bell pepper from the other night. My present self is thanking my past self for doing that. And I'm gonna slide all these little diced up sweet pickles in here. Now, if you wanted to, you could probably just use a sweet pickle relish, but I think the texture and sort of the consistency of it is a little more mushy, but I'm sticking to the recipe exactly as my aunt gave it to me because I want it to taste like my childhood. <laughs> now, here's where you gotta love the old recipes. It says, add enough mayonnaise and pickle juice to make it moist. So this is probably half a cup of mayonnaise that I'm starting with. And I measured me out about a quarter cup of pickle juice, and we're gonna start with this much. Friends, this is looking like I remember it. I'm gonna add about another quarter cup of mayonnaise in here. This is about an eighth more of pickle juice. Last year in my salads video, I do one of these every summer. Last year, I really wanted to make this salad, but I hadn't seen anybody in my family talk about this in a long time, and I remember it at my mom McCauley's house on Sundays. I remember this as a child. This ain't something you think a child would love, but I loved this stuff. I'm just a cornbread eater, friends, but nobody had really said nothing about it or I hadn't, you know, heard nobody talk about it. And it was kind of sad to me. Like I was afraid to ask any of my aunts or anybody because I don't know, it just, it made me sad because it was, you know, a memory of Mama's house and I didn't want to make nobody else sad asking for <laughs> this old recipe. Number one, that's silly. Don't y'all be like that because it tickles me to death when my kids ask me about recipes from people in our family that are past and it tickled my family too. So at Easter, when my Aunt Colette had that kraut salad, I took that opportunity and I said, you remember that cornbread salad Mama used to make? And she said, oh, that was your Aunt Kim's recipe. And she got it for me. She said she had it. She just hadn't made it in a long time. So that's what I'm making, Aunt Kim's cornbread salad. Oh, this is looking good. I think that is the perfect amount of moisture. Before I put this in the fridge for everything to come together, I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. Oh my gosh, it's already so good. I can't wait to eat this tonight. I got so excited that I almost forgot to throw a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper on here before I refrigerate it. So the moral of my story is, friends, don't be afraid to ask somebody in your family for a recipe. Of course, we're sad that people have gone on. We're sad for us because we miss them. But you know, this is how we carry on their memories right here. Thinking about them, passing down their recipes and all that kind of stuff. And just remembering all these good memories. That is what is so awesome about food to me. Is this takes me right back to being a little girl on Sunday afternoons sitting over there at my mama Macaulay's, eating beans and cornbread salad, watching my Aunt Sherry put on makeup, and she always would give me, like, makeup that she tried and didn't like, and those are just such good memories. We just had such good times. We still have good times. Now we're going to put this in the refrigerator, and I bet you can guess what I'm going to say. This would be great tonight. 
with leftover pinto beans. Now I bet you're wondering what we do with that tomato. We wait till the very end and dice it up nice and small and put it right over the top of the cornbread salad right before we serve it. Friends, this tastes so good just like I remember it. I stepped right back in time. This is a great way to use up some leftover cornbread and make a whole new side dish out of it. I'd say it's right up there with cornbread and milk. Be sure and give this one a try and let me know what you think about this and the kraut salad. Those are a couple of family recipes of mine. And if you like the looks of that white cheddar macaroni and cheese dish I served it up with, be sure and subscribe and come back here next week to see how I made it. Let's make a crack pasta salad. Tonight, I'm using one pound of elbow macaroni noodles. I've also made this using penne pasta. It was really good and really pretty that way. Of course, you can use any short noodle you like. We're just gonna cook it about seven minutes until it's al dente. Then you need to drain it and you wanna rinse it lightly with some cool water a couple times. You want to make sure you stop that cooking process and really let these noodles get nice and cool. While my noodles were cooking, I went ahead and baked up some bacon in the oven, and I'm gonna take a little fistful of that and chop it up, about a half a cup of bacon. I'm also using about half of a small Vidalia onion. You could use a green onion or a red onion. It would be really pretty and tasty in here. And I had about half a carton of grape tomatoes that I'm just gonna slice right down the middle. Now that all the chopping's done, let's start on the dressing. We're gonna use about two thirds cup of olive oil. I'm using a quarter cup of buttermilk. I don't always have buttermilk, but you can make your own by using one tablespoon of white vinegar or lemon juice to a cup of milk. We're also adding in about a half a cup of mayonnaise and one package of the dry ranch seasoning mix. You'll notice I have a huge bowl that I'm mixing up this dressing in. That's because I'm making this full recipe and it makes a lot. But that's a good thing because this stuff will get eat up. It's really good. Now we're gonna add in our bacon, onions, and tomatoes that we chopped up. And we're gonna stir in a cup and a half of cheddar cheese. That's where the crack comes in. Crack is just simply a recipe that has combination of cheddar cheese, ranch dressing, and bacon. This recipe also called for about a fourth a cup of fresh parsley. I only had dried, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that in. If you had basil, you could definitely use that here. Parsley will just give it just a little bit of a peppery taste, and really, if you've got a good onion in there, you won't miss it too much if you don't have either. Now, dump those cold, cold noodles in here and just start to mix them. I'm finding that I really like adding a little bit of olive oil into these kind of salads that I'm making. It helps all the seasonings cling to the noodles and it also just kind of helps keep the noodles, uh, the texture of them a little bit moister. You know, once you put something like this in the refrigerator, sometimes it tends to dry out and you know, that's gonna happen. You can always add a little bit more mayonnaise or anything like that. But I do find that this little bit of oil really helps with that. After serving this, if I'm lucky enough to have some left over, I like to throw in a little cucumber and some rotisserie chicken and eat this for lunch too. And friends, this pasta salad is the one my family requests for every get together now. I've made it a number of times over the last year. It's perfect with big old hamburgers, but you know, it's good with Easter dinner. We've had this at Callie's wedding shower. I've made it a bunch of times and I think your family will love it too. I'm gonna start the day by getting some bacon in the oven to cook up. I love to cook bacon in the oven makes a lot less mess and I may not use all of this bacon in the recipe that I'm making but we'll have it to put on sandwiches or whatever and the way I like to cook bacon in the oven is to put it in at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes then I'll take a look at it I may cook it another five I might even flip it over in between baking and stick it back in I'm pretty persnickety with my bacon I like it crisp, but not burnt, and I sure don't like it lint, especially in a salad. And what we're making today is a pasta Caesar salad. I'm also getting some pasta started, and I'm using half a pound or eight ounces of rotini. Any short kind of pasta would work. Just as soon as that pasta gets al dente, I'm gonna drain the hot water off and start rinsing it with cool water. We want it to be nice and cold before we add it into our lettuce. I'm also 
chopping up one heart of romaine lettuce going to get it washed thoroughly and spinned out in my salad spinner. I may go ahead and use this whole heart because there was some not so good looking lettuce in the inside of it, but I'm actually making about half of what this recipe calls for. We're just having this for lunch. I'm going to be dressing this salad, so we're going to eat it all <laughs> and we won't have any leftovers, but if you're prepping salad for the whole week, the most essential thing you need to do in order to keep it fresh is to spin this lettuce and get it really good and dry. Then store it in a zippered plastic bag with a paper towel and that will keep all week long. I'm going to take about three slices of this bacon and I'm going to just chunk it up in little bite-sized pieces. You could definitely use the little uh, pre-packaged real bacon pieces. I use those all the time, but if I have the opportunity, especially a salad like this that is so simple, you just want each ingredient to just be the best that it can be. So I'm going to use bacon that I have just cooked up, and I like it in bigger chunks in a salad too. Here's something you've never seen me use before. This is a rotisserie pulled chicken. I got it at Walmart. It's a pound, and it is all the chicken breast meat. I'll have to give it that. It's all white meat, but this was $10. I've seen this. I'm always too cheap to buy it, but I wanted to try it, so I thought I'd take one for the team and spend that extra money and see if this is worth the price. Really, who am I kidding? It's going to be delicious. It's rotisserie chicken. But my little budget-friendly heart, I just can't hardly stand to pay $10 for this. I'm only going to use half of it in this. I am going to chunk some of these bigger pieces up just a little bit. Normally, when I'm using chicken and stuff like this, I like to prep my own. But I have depleted my stock of prepped chicken, and I wanted to try this. I had a meeting tonight. I knew I wasn't going to have time to do much, but I really wanted this salad. These convenience items, that's why they can charge so much for them. They're delicious, and we'll buy them if we need them. Okay, let's build this salad. I can't believe this is only eight ounces, half a box of pasta. Let's slide this cup, or maybe a cup and a half, of rotisserie chicken and our bacon in. I'm going to put in about a cup of croutons, and I'm just using some Caesar croutons from Walmart. I'm going to put in about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I'm using this shaved Parmesan. Like I said, very simple and very few ingredients in this. So I just splurged and went with something that's just maybe level it up a bit. And I am going to go ahead and put about half of this bottle of Caesar dressing on here. And I just really enjoy Kraft's dressings. I think this classic Caesar is delicious. Now let's give it all a nice gentle toss. Can you believe how much this makes? If you doubled this and went ahead and made like the full recipe, this would be perfect to take to a picnic or a cookout. And this is hearty enough that it is really a main dish all on its own. Let's finish it off with just a nice little cracking of black pepper. Sprinkle just a little bit more of that shaved parm across the top. And let's just give it a little squeeze of some fresh lemon juice over top. This salad was so beautiful. I love the colors in it. I love the simplicity of it. And it was so absolutely delicious. The rotisserie chicken was 100% worth it. It has the best flavor. I just don't buy the rotisserie chickens, the whole chickens, because I really only like the white meat. And I feel like it's really a waste of food when I buy them, even though it's cheaper to buy it that way. Paying a little bit more and getting an entire pound of just the pulled white chicken, that was definitely worth it and the flavor was out of this world. All these really good ingredients, the rotisserie chicken, the home cooked bacon, the shaved parm, and just the brightness of the lemon juice on it, out of this world. 
Even Patrick, who is not a big salad fan, ate a couple big platefuls of this and said he'd like to have it again. Let's go, friends. By popular, popular demand, we're making the salad that has no business being called a salad. It is the Snickers salad. First thing is always first, let's get our dicing done. I'm using two medium-sized honey crisp apples. I'm not peeling mine. I want the pop of red to show through, and I don't mind to eat the peeling of an apple. If you want to peel yours, that's fine. And I've also seen this made with Granny Smith apples. I'm sure that would be really good with the tartness, but I really like a sweet honey crisp, so that's what I'm using. I've also got two of the sharing size Snickers bars, and I'm gonna chunk those up into bite-sized pieces as well. I am halving this recipe today. For our pudding mixture, I'm gonna use a 3.4 ounce package of instant vanilla pudding, and we're only adding three force a cup of milk to this. This is going to be a lot thicker than if you were just making the pudding on its own. And I mentioned that I am halving this recipe. I pulled out about half of that thick pudding mixture right there. Now I'm just going to take an eight ounce carton of Cool Whip whipped topping and I'm going to put about half of that in here, about four ounces or half of a container. And I have had this thawing out in the refrigerator, so it is just going to fold in nice and easy. When I look over there at the amount of apples and candy bars that I've cut up, this just doesn't look like enough. It looks like I'm going to have a lot more candy bar and apple than I'm going to have this stuff. We'll throw some in and see where we go. Put in our Snickers. And we're just gonna fold this together. Oh man, that's pretty. And yeah, this is perfect because you don't want a whole bunch of pudding and Cool Whip. It's supposed to just really coat the apples and the Snickers. Like I said, this doesn't even deserve to have salad in the name. But I mentioned here a while back in a video something about, I don't even remember what brought it up, but I said, I've had a recipe for a Snickers salad forever and I've never made it. A number of folks in the comments said, please make the Snickers salad. So I'm gladly obliging. This is not a part of my healthy food journey, but we'll do a little in moderation here. I'm sure the rest of the family can help me take care of this. I think I'll give her a little taste before I refrigerate it. Aw, oh, you don't want to eat this. You don't want this at all, friends. <laughs> Actually, you can see I did save back a little Snickers to top it with, then a little bit of melted caramel. This was really good. I'll say this about it, though. It surprised me. It tastes more like a caramel apple. I kept thinking with all the Snickers and that drizzle of caramel that this would be a really decadent, just overly rich, almost sickening dessert, but it wasn't. Like my mind couldn't reconcile. Am I eating a big gooey, caramely, delicious Snickers bar? Or am I eating a light apple or a caramel apple? It had my taste buds all confused, but it was definitely good. Certainly one that you wanna share with your friends. And I really liked this fluffy pudding stuff that was in here so much that as a matter of fact, I took that little bit and put it into the rest of my Cool Whip and just combined all that together. And it's so like fluffy, but thick. This was really good by itself, you could dip a little bit of strawberry in it. That was really good. But uh, it was hard for me to stay out of this little mixture this week. I promised you a little pinto bean tutorial and here it is. The first thing that I always do is kind of look through my beans. You're just looking for little rocks or bad beans, kind of like this one. Sometimes you'll find some in there. The next thing I do is rinse my beans, and I don't just rinse them, I really scrub them because they're kind of dirty. So you really wanna scrub them until the water runs clean. I like to cook my beans overnight in the crock pot. I just make sure they got plenty of water in them, about an inch or so from the top. And I put them on when I'm getting ready to go to bed and I turn them on high. And when I worked outside the home, I'd let them cook the whole next day on low till I got home from work. Just make sure you have plenty of water. I season them with about a tablespoon of salt 
and a big old dollop of Crisco. Crisco is just a solid shortening if you don't happen to know what that is. And I almost forgot I had some leftover ham from Granny's house, so I cut that up and threw it in there too. Like I said, I turn them on high and I let them cook all night. I'm making cornbread tonight and I'm gonna make it out of this cornmeal mix that I got down at the National Cornbread Festival. It is packaged up here by the Antique Tractor and Engine Club. That's who we bought it from down there. There was somebody down there right across from them that was grinding up grain. I don't know if it was Logan Turnpike Mill, but that's what was attached to this bag. So I'll leave all their information down in my description box in case you want to check them out. And I'm going to use this cornbread recipe that was right here on the back of this card attached to this cornmeal. And apparently it is self-rising meal because the ingredients down here, they have the baking powder, baking soda, and salt in it. A lot of yens have been asking me about my cast iron too, wanting to know how I season it. This is what I do every time I use my cast iron. After it has had a chance to cool, I'm going to warm it up with some warm water in the sink and then I'll let it get a little bit hotter. And I just take my scrubber sponge and it is a non-scratch sponge and I just scrub around with just water on my skillets. Now I'm not afraid to use a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid if I need to. We can rinse it right off and we're going to re-season it. But I do only scrape it with a plastic utensil and I only use wooden or plastic utensils whenever I'm cooking in them too. Once you get it clean from whatever you've made in it, and honestly, when it's cornbread, a lot of times I just wipe it out. I don't even wash it. I dry them really good, and then I put them back on top of the stove eye, and I turn the heat up really high on them. And you know it's good and hot whenever, number one, you can see smoke, or number two, you try to press your finger to the side of the cast iron, and it's so hot you can't hold your finger there. Then I just put a little bit of olive oil or any oil that has a really high smoking point on it. Let that get hot. Then I just take a little paper towel, which I hear you're not supposed to do, but I do it anyway. <laughs> or if you have just a rag that you just use for your cast iron, and I just rub that oil all over it. I do the inside and the outside of mine. Then I set them off of the hot stove eyes onto a trivet, and I let them cool down completely. Once they're cool, I come back and I take another clean cloth and I just wipe any of the excess oil off of these. And they're just gonna clean up and slick up better every time you use them. That's the best way to get that gritty feeling. A lot of people don't like that about Lodge cast iron. It sort of has like a textured gritty feeling and they wanna like sand it down or this or that. Hey, I would never do that. The more you use it, the slicker it's gonna get. Now this is my daily use and the Lodge cast irons that I buy, they're already pre-seasoned and ready to go. But if you've got one that's not been seasoned or if you're interested in seeing us take an old piece back down to bare metal and seasoning it back up, I have a video all about that. I'll I'll link it up in the cards and put it in the description box for you as well. Watch this video next to see the top six salads from last year and friends you'll be set for the whole summer. Thanks so much for spending some of your time with me. I appreciate you and until next time I send you love from my kitchen.